Talk about the rage. Talk about the NBA. Chris. All right, uh, we're going to start with yesterday's games. Uh, Monday, we had uh, two. We had the Cavs and the Celtics. Celtics whooped ass. Um, I got that completely wrong. So did I. And we got the Spurs who lost to the Suns. Who did make it a game, but the Suns took it over in the end. Um, Called it. We're going to start with the uh, Cavs and Celtics. Um, Celtics, Rasheed Wallace finally played a game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, had 17 points in 18 minutes. Uh, Ray Allen, 22 points. Garnett averaging 18 and 10 exactly uh, for the for the first two games. And then you got Rondo with 13 points and 19 damn assists. And as far as the Cavs. And one assist in the fourth quarter. As far as the Cavs, Cavs, LeBron 24 and 7. And Jameson 16 and 6. And nobody else showed up for the damn Cavs. Except Hickson, I give you credit off the bench. I think he had 13 off yeah, the bench. Yeah, he had 13. But uh, Cavs, you got your ass whooped at home. Um, I, I agree with uh, Plasky, what he said on the round of horn. You, you party too damn much after receiving your trophy, probably. And, I mean, for Mike Brown to be fired up like he was, might not be looking good for the Celtics come game three. Well, you know, the real thing about this, the Celtics knew what happened in game one. They knew exactly what happened in game one. How they gave up that lead at the, at, you know, the tail end of game one. They almost let Cleveland climb back into that damn league. Mm -hmm. They tried. <laughs> if there was a way that they could have gave that game away, they definitely tried. But you know what? The you know, Celtics came back, answered that run with the Cavs, and said, you know what? We're going to play some real basketball now. And suddenly they did. They kept it up. And I was very proud of the Celtics for not blowing that lead like I thought they would. But, you know, like, like Chris, I got that wrong. Last night I had picked them to lose. I had picked the Cavs to win that ball game, and it went the other way. Congratulations to the Celtics. Uh, Rondo, 13 and 19. Golly, that was such you know, it was an amazing game. Some of his passes were crisp. Just at the at the end of the ball game, in the fourth quarter, he didn't have one assist in the fourth quarter. <coughs> he tied a Celtics uh, playoff record, but I was very, you know, I was very disappointed he couldn't get one assist in the fourth quarter. Uh, well, I uh, beat that as a man. I mean, Boston played a complete game for the first time in in a couple weeks, and. And they did it on the road against the MVP, LeBron James. So one thing that I can say from this is that Boston is no pushover. They will be ready for game three, no matter how uh, pumped up Mike Brown is. Uh, mind you, this is, a, like, this is a Boston team that a lot of people are, some people are writing off. or saying that, hey, they're, or they're too old or they're just a one or two year process. But apparently not. Apparently not. Karen, Kevin Garnett. Had his usual 18 and 10. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that his uh, that he's on his downside, but I'm still. I have a little bit of confidence that Kevin Garnett will do, will keep delivering in this series. Well, as for me, you know, I think that this was definitely a statement game. Uh, you know, Cavs came into Game One thinking, you know, this is going to be a pushover. In fact, even all the reporters of just about a bunch of ESPN saying the Cavs will have this series under control, and the Celtics, you know, they looked at it and they thought, you know, we're not taking this. This is going to, we're going to punch them in the mouth, pretty much, and say that this is no pushover. You know, Celtics, they, they won a championship a couple of years ago. They still know how to get things done and how to, and how to go all the way. So I think that this, thing, this series will definitely go, I think it will go seven. You know, I don't, I don't do y'all agree with me on that? I originally called it 4-1, but um, <laughs> after that ass whooping they received at home, I expect Cleveland to win game three, but um, I, I give it six. Uh, Houston, uh, Houston. Uh, Boston has now taken back home court. They've taken home mm -hmm. court over, and you know, you win in one of those. How does the, you know? What do people around the horn say? It's not a series until the road team wins. Yeah. And the road team won last night, and I think it, you know, I think it was a series even if the home team would have won, because the Celtics and the Cavs they bring so much energy and so much, you know, of so much skill to that to the game. That something you have to like. It's a must see. Any game they played is a must-see. Last night's blowout win was still drawing people to watch. Okay, because it is Celtics, Cavs, LeBron James versus you know the Celtics. You know, it's crazy, but amazing. But it's also great that uh, you know you know that they all get that the Celtics got back on track. Finally played a complete ball game, like JB said. Very proud of those people. But the Cavs have some answering answering some questions they got right now because you know how did what happens. To Mo Williams and Delonte West last night. Nothing. They barely even showed up. 
So they got to show up in game three. And I believe after Mike Brown's little rant yesterday, he, they will show up in game three because really and truly, you mm -hmm. always answer when your coach calls you out. And not only that, but they really need to show up because that, that pressure is not put on them to, make, to try and take back this series. You know, going back to Boston is not, a, it's not an easy place to play at. You know, and it's just it's hard to try and come back. I mean, go back to the last series of the Mavs and Spurs after Spurs won game two. It was pretty much said and done, you know. I mean, you go back to San Antonio and you just can't, you know, you can't win on the road. It's hard. You know, so it's, you got to win, you got to win. You know, and your pressure's put on you. So, I mean, I think that from my perspective, I think LeBron James is thinking about his MVP trophy that he got before the game actually started because they had presented it to him. I'm right on that. They presented yeah. it before the game. You know, the people just got this, like, all right, we'll settle down now. You know, it's time just, just, to, just to play. And then I was like, oh, Boston has turned it on. And it's like, oh, well, shit. You know what I mean? What can we do? But, yeah, you know. so pretty, much the sec pretty much the second year in a row with Cleveland and with LeBron receiving his MVP trophy, they have lost both games he has been presented that trophy. So technically, Cleveland should not be, wor Cleveland should not be worried about uh, – Looking ahead or anything like that, Orlando or Atlanta will be there. Whoever, whoever they're expecting to play, but they can't look back. They can't be looking past Boston because if they were looking past Boston, Boston sure did bring them back to reality last night. And they cannot win a game with Mo Williams scoring just three points, three or four, or four points. Oh, well, let's go ahead and check this out. Yeah, the Cavs are still undefeated when they win Game One. You know, when they win Game One, they're still undefeated in the playoffs. So you still can't count them out just yet. I put it like that. If they lose game three, then it's over. Oh, yeah, if they lose game three, it's over. Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't go on the limb just say it's over. I, I think it's over. I wouldn't go on the limb just say it's over. But we're going to get to the second game. We had the Spurs and the Suns. Uh, Ginobili had 27, 5 and 5. Tim Duncan had 20 and 11. Tony Parker had 26, even though he's coming off the bench. Um, the Suns have a newly established big three. You know, Stoudemire with 23 and 13. Uh, the, the real JR in the West. Jason Richardson had 27 and 6, <laughs> and Steve Nash had 33 and 10. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Spurs came back and tied the ball game, but the Suns then hit them with a 10-0 run and just held on to the lead after that. So um, Spurs just got to play some better defense to me. Um, Suns, I expected them to come out and be real good first game at home, but I'm, I'm really scared. This is the team I was scared of as far as the Spurs playing – in the playoffs, so Spurs got to step it up. Yeah, especially as when the Spurs, the one thing that uh, caused them to lose, other than the fact they played, they played a little bit poorly in that first half. Um, they fell into the they fell into the trap of playing the Phoenix Suns game, and that's running up and down the court. San Antonio's not built for that. Um, Chris, ah, not as well. Chris said before, uh, Phoenix does have a big three now. Steve Nash pretty much led led the force with that. And the first three quarters, he first three quarters he had his weight, so that pretty much is what led Phoenix to the win. Yeah, you can't you, if you want to play a different style of basketball, you can't do it. You have to stick to what your fundamentals are. You know, it's San Antonio has to play half court defense and has to play in, the, in their their set, their mindset, not try to play somebody else. Steve Nash proved why he is still my favorite player. All right, we got two games going on tonight. Um, there's already one in progress. You got the Magic and the Hawks. Uh, the Magic, last time I checked, they were up by five right now. I don't know. I haven't updated it yet. But uh, who you see winning this first game? Game one. All the Magic. I'll go with the Magic. Yeah, I said the Magic. And then the uh, second game of the night, we got game two between the Lakers and the Jazz. Who you got? Uh, I'm going with the Lakers, AK-47, still out. Uh, I did just call him. I'll go. I'll go with Utah. I mean, they're probably they're probably still they're probably still pissed off the fact they had a chance to win the game Sunday. Even, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like blame them for like having only a, what a day and a half of rest. Uh, I'm gonna say Lakers as well. Jazz are depleted right now. I'm gonna give it to the Jazz. Jazz gonna whoop that ass. Damn. We got more on the range. Stay tuned.